just so happens God's servant Billy Graham and Andre uh, Crouch are now in heaven and back together again as I believe they teamed up a few times to do God's will and it just so happens today that we are preaching uh, one of Billy Graham's messages honoring God with that and honoring Jesus Christ and remembering God's choice servant Billy Graham by preaching an adaptation of one of his powerful messages and this message happens to be titled is there an answer and we just answer that question through Andre Crouch's song Jesus is the answer you know, every now and then God will send a hellish comet into the world. They don't come every day. Uh, Billy Graham uh, Andre Crouch and we thank God for sending these uh, Helly's comments our way and we pray that God will send more uh, but God uses certain people in a special way across the nation around the world and uh, over the years from generation to generation and I think it honors God, hear me and hear me well, I think it honors God to remember <coughs> these comments who come every now and then and give God glory for the gifts, the charisma and the talent and the ability to strike the right chord. Amen, somebody. And if you see... Martin Luther King Jr., Spurgeon, Moody, Billy Sunday, and you, you see, one of the marks of a true Christian is that they can be happy, genuinely happy and rejoice in God for gifting others to do greater things than they can do. Because you're dead, remember? And if you're dead, it does not matter who gets the credit or who seems to get the glory. Uh, God deserves all of the glory, the praise, and the honor. Don't get mad because you're not Martin Luther King Jr. Stop trying to be him. Don't get mad because you're not Billy Graham. Uh, don't get mad that people are still singing Andre Croucher's songs and won't sing yours and you're living today. <clears throat> You're not Andre Crouch, and you never will be Andre Crouch. God is the one who raises up somebody and puts down another. God is the one who shows favor to certain people, and you couldn't stop it if you, uh, if you tried. Just give God the glory, the praise, and the honor, and watch this, my beloved. Let your little light shine. Let your little light shine. You may not have a big light like Billy Graham. You may not have, by the way, you're not Billy Graham. God knew that he could trust Billy Graham to preach the gospel to kings and queens and presidents. And not, and then not go to his head. And he never arrived to a meeting in a Rolls Royce. Unless, unless the country picked him up in something like that. But it was not his, I can assure you. If it was up to Billy Graham, he would have come 
uh, in a horse and buggy with some overalls on. God raised him up because God knew he could handle it. Most of you couldn't handle one quarter of what he had to, had to deal with. Why can't I be moody? You're not moody. Why can't I be a king? You're not a king. Rejoice in God for God raising these people up. And the same God who raised them up can use you. Let your little light shine. Don't be like the servant who went and buried his little talent. Didn't want to blame the Lord. I knew I kind of knew what kind of master you were. So I'm going to just bury my little talent. You've got to be kidding me. See, if you're truly born again, if you're truly saved, you thank God for how God blesses others genuinely. <clears throat> and here's the, here's the thing. If you're that way, Genuinely, God will bless you too. And God will use you. Turn your Bibles, my beloved, to John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And let's all stand for the reading of God's holy word. And no matter what you're going through on this Friday, wherever you are in the world, is an old saying and may sound trite but it's true God is good all of the time everybody help me out and all of the time God is good there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him by the way just be in Jesus and let Jesus be in you and people will know you come from God too because <clears throat> it's all about Jesus it's not about you Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto thee, I'm reading from the King James, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Not much get in it. Or much less get in it. You cannot even see the kingdom of God. And you won't see anything in hell. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Jesus, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And I believe, I believe that he was sincere. I believe he had too much respect for Jesus to be facetious, to be sarcastic. Some take it that way. But knowing the character of Nicodemus uh, and his status, uh, it might have been a little bit of that, but not much. Jesus answered, remember now Billy Graham's message was entitled, Is There an Answer? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee. Ye must be. Born again. Holy Father God. <coughs> <coughs> Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this beautiful day that 
you have made and may very well be our last day. So, Lord, help us to live like it. We praise you and we thank you for your mercy, your love, your grace, your holy word. And for all of the millions and manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the joy and the blessing to be here today. We can say with Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And as the old black saints used to say, in our right minds. And we individually, Lord, confess our sins, our failures and faults unto you. For Jesus Christ, forgive us and cleanse us of all sin and all unrighteousness as only you can do it. We don't even understand how you do that, but we thank you for doing it. For you said you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness through the blood of Christ. Crush and crucify our flesh afresh and anew. And Lord, help us not to say anything or do anything in the flesh. Fill us with the fullness of fresh and anew and the power, the unction and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord, this is the most important thing that I will do today. This is really the most important thing besides our morning devotionals that uh, any of us would do. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the people who gather around through the technology that you have wrought through your uh, human beings. Some are not saved, but you gave them a vision that some saved people never had. And we thank you for using these people to create such things as Facebook, uh, such things as Instagram, such things as podcasts, YouTube, GodTube, and Vimeo, and uh, 101 other outlets that we're on all around the world, and making it possible out of mid-air uh, to pull out a little device out of one's pocket and listen to me live and on demand almost everywhere on earth. We give you the glory, praise, and honor and our stats show multiplied millions have listened to this poor preacher and have viewed uh, this poor preacher preaching. Lord, uh, uh, 40 years ago, I would have never imagined something like this. Almost half a century ago, Lord, I, you know, I, I, all I know is you called me to preach. I didn't want to be called to preach, as you know. But you kept giving me these visions of crowds and crowds of folk listening and hearing the gospel. And I was the one in the pulpit. And uh, you persisted in calling me. And I finally submitted and by your grace, I've been preaching ever since. And we thank you for what you've done. For it has been a glorious ride. And I give you the glory, praise, and honor. And we thank you, Lord, for the ride you gave your servant, Billy Graham, as we preach uh, an adaptation of his message. Now, save that soul that is near as hell. And uh, encourage every discouraged Christian. For there are many. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Dr. Billy Graham continues by saying the answer that Jesus gave Nicodemus that night is the answer to all the world's problems. Jesus in the words of Andre Crouch, is the answer. Amen, somebody. Now, people just don't wake up one morning and say Jesus is the answer if they didn't know that to be the, be the truth. And millions, my beloved, down through the centuries have said Jesus is the answer. Ye must be born again. Being born again is the necessary change if humanity is to be saved. If a soul 
is to be saved. Why is there such a change when one is born again? And maybe tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'll sing that uh, uh, another song I believe by Andre Crouch. Uh, what a change has been made in me. Something, something along those lines. I feel like singing it right now. I'll tell you the truth. I wish I could sing like my dad, Bishop Daniel White Jr. I wish I could sing like E. Dewey Smith. I wish, Lord, I wish I could sing. I'll, I'll break out singing three times in a sermon. It is because you are an eternal soul, not just a body, and a mind, an eternal soul, my God, help us. Thus, you will never find inward joy. You will never find inward peace, Billy Graham said. You will never find forgiveness. Or a sense of security with God until your soul has been saved and satisfied. And your soul cannot be satisfied apart from God. Amen, somebody. Now, how would the satisfying of men's souls affect world affairs? <clears throat> you have to understand, Dr. Billy Graham was a true ambassador, ambassador from heaven. He had a vision of things that most preachers didn't have. His vision was far beyond a local church far beyond one country, but a world vision. He was a prophet to the world. Somebody wrote a book about Billy Graham titled, A Prophet with Honor. God gave Billy Graham favor to move about in all, almost all countries of the world. And he never, from the hills of North Carolina, he never compromised the gospel. <laughs> An amazing life. He said, Preacher, why are you so excited about it? Because I know God did it. I, I know God did it. God gets the glory, the praise, and the honor. Don't you worry about it. Just let your little light shine. Let God use you. Wherever you are in the world. And Dr. Billy Graham goes on to say, How can that solve the problems of the world? This Jesus, this being born again, this being saved. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you see any solution? to the problems of the world during the next 100 years if we keep going the way we're going and Billy Graham preached this a long time ago and it's worse now just yesterday a man registered as a sex offender don't get me started on this but the woman still wanted that man over her daughter, who already has a father, now we can't find the sex offender man, nor the daughter, the little girl. Don't get me started on that, because I'll say some things that Billy Graham would never say. So let me stop right there, because I'm getting ready to, I'm get, I'm. I 
Dr. Billy Graham said, how many of you would agree with me when I tell you that as long as men lie and hate and cheat, as long as there is prejudice and greed in the world, there is the possibility that at a certain point, somewhere out there, some madman will push a button and make the whole, the whole world his funeral pyre. Is there an answer? Don't you think Hitler would have done it in his last days if he had had the power to do so? Is there an answer? And Dr. Billy Graham said, all right then. Now suppose we could give the whole world an injection of love. My God, my God. Come on, Billy. An injection of love instead of hate. Suppose we could find a serum to give every man, woman, and child that would change them overnight. So you know any of the serum like that? It is certainly not education alone. Because it was the educated in the civilized nations who fought it out in World War II. Educated folk. Big time. Do you know any answer? Do you know any answer? Can you name one thing? Dr. Billy Graham said that if given to all of humanity would change the world overnight. Is there an answer? There is one answer to that question. And Andre Krauss said Jesus Christ is the answer. And he's right. You may not accept this answer. That is your prerogative. That is your privilege. But I believe it is the answer. Human nature can be transformed. I almost got, I almost got with my black self, I almost got Billy Graham's accent right there. Almost. God almost gave it to me. Almost gave it to me right there. I heard of myself just, just at that moment. Human nature can be transformed through faith in Jesus Christ. Your life can be transformed through Jesus Christ. If enough people receive Christ and have their lives transformed by his power, I believe it would make an impact on world affairs. Now see, this is a pure evangelist talking to us, Billy Graham. See, that's how evangelists think. <laughs> Uh, pastors oftentimes think, well, we can just get enough uh, folk to vote Democratic, uh, enough folk to vote Republican on certain issues. Uh, we can turn this nation around. You have lost your mind. The only reason why those of us who are saved and born again stand for certain issues is because we're saved and born again. We would be just like the world if we were not saved and born again. Jesus is the answer. Not President Obama, not President Trump, not President Bush, or nobody else. Jesus is the answer. Can somebody say amen? Have you let Christ transform your life? The only reason why I'm here is because of Christ. It's not me, man. This is not, this is not what I... I never wanted to do this. It's because of Christ. 
What Billy Graham did on the face of the earth was because of Christ in his life. He was born again. Have you been born again? Jesus is the answer. Have you been born again? Jesus is the answer. Have you been born again? Jesus is the answer. Will you trust him today? Will you receive him as your savior? He is standing waiting for you. Come to Jesus as you are. As the music plays just as I am. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your savior today my beloved. Allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him. For your salvation from the sin that causes you to go to hell. Yes. You can go ahead and jam, jam, boogie, boogie, and let the good times roll. You can spend your time with prostitutes and gigolos. You can smoke, smoke, smoke yourself to death. As one song put it, you can get drunk every night. You can get high every night. You can party until sunlight. You can do that, but remember what King Solomon told you. You can do all of that, but just remember, you will be brought into judgment. You will answer to God for every thought, every word, every deed. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the answer for the world today. First accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell. I hate to tell you that. And hell is no joke. Hell is a sad place. With an agonizing memory, a person will be tormented with their memory in hell. Every second, every minute, every hour. Probably having no sense of time because you will be there forever. In hell you might as well be blind because you won't be able to see anything. Even though you'll feel the heat. You'll feel the burning. You'll be tormented in hell forever. Hell is bad news. Jesus Christ the Lord of glory, yes, the meek and lowly one, sweet Jesus, was a hellfire and brimstone preacher. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell while he was here than most preachers living today, combined. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. That's how serious he was about it. He didn't die for nothing. He died to save your soul, your eternal soul, from hell by your faith in him, trusting in him. But not only to save you from hell, to save you to heaven because he redeemed you, he died to redeem you for himself. Because he wants to fellowship with you in heaven. Yes, I, I understand. I don't know why he wants to fellowship with us, but he does. He loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is bad news, but I have good news for you. Uh, Jesus Christ, the same Jesus, said with his own lips, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Billy Graham said Jesus is the answer. You must be born again. Pray and ask him to save you today. Based upon the word of God, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. The Bible says in Romans 10.9, That if thou, you, shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to shake the preacher's hand to be saved. You don't have to sing in a choir to be saved. You don't have to help old ladies across the street to be saved. None of that stuff will save you. All of those things are good, but they will not save you. You must be born again and you can only be born again by trusting in Jesus Christ so pray and ask him to save you today believing in Jesus repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart Holy Father God in heaven I acknowledge that I am a sinner I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments in many ways. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe in simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Uh, dear friend of mine, if you trusted in your heart, believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life. And that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ. Uh, please go to GospelLightSociety.com or Gospel Light House of Prayer right where some of you are. And read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelightsociety.com or one of, one of our other emails uh, on one, whatever platform you're on and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well. And we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is my prayer.